Hey everyone, welcome. Welcome to uh, Press Dom. Welcome to Press Siege. Night three of this season six of Praying in Tongues at Midnight. We're doing this for 21 nights. I want to welcome all of you from all over, wherever you're watching from. Andrew, welcome from Michigan. Michelle, welcome wherever you're watching from. Someone says Nigeria, welcome. Cynthia, welcome. Sharon, welcome. We are live right here from our studio in Manchester, South Manchester, actually, in Gatley. And uh, we're excited that we are able to just host this space where we could encourage you in your prayer life. Uh, we are here to be a catalyst, a catalyst for prayer. And when you connect to this channel, connect to what we're doing here, we believe that God would just stir up that prayer fire within you. Every believer is called to prayer. You know, every now and again, some people say, oh, you know what, you've got the gift of prayer. And I often like to make this clear, and I repeat it over and over again. There is no such thing in the Bible as a gift of prayer. <laughs> no such thing as everyone is called to prayer. Just like there's no, like, a gift of worship. We're all called to worship. And so on this channel, we want to stir up that fire of prayer within you. It's in your DNA as a believer. You are built to commune with the Heavenly Father. And one of the key ways in which you do that is through prayer. In fact, many of us Christians, we say these kind of cliches like, Christianity is not about religion, it's about relationship. Well, relationship is non-existent without communication. And if you're going to have communication with God, then you're going to do it through prayer. So to be a believer, to be a true believer in God, in Christ, is actually to be a believer that has a life of prayer, not just going to a prayer meeting, but having a prayer culture. So that's what we're about. Tonight, we're going to be praying in tongues for an hour. Now, you may go, that's crazy. That might not make much sense to you, but we believe in the power of praying in tongues. And you might go, well, why are you doing this on the internet? Why don't you just pray in tongues in your bedroom by yourself and all that? Well, that's great. Right here on YouTube, there's all kinds of filth, all kinds of junk, all kinds of people living in all kinds of immoral lifestyles, and they're bold about it, they're not ashamed about it, and they do whatever they want to do. So guess what? We're going to do whatever we feel God wants us to do as well, and we're not going to be ashamed about it. You might go, well, you know, no one understands what you're saying. Well, we're not here praying in tongues to you, we're praying in tongues to God. So it's a very different dynamic. We're not coming to release a message from God in tongue to the body of Christ or to the nations of the earth. We're here to pray in tongues, and we're communing with God. God. So as we have the music going and all the stuff going on, is there to stir your heart to engage with God. If you've never prayed in tongues before and you're tuning in for the first time, well, I want to encourage you that this could be one of those times when the Lord baptizes you with his spirit. Why not here? Why not now? Why not you? So release your faith. Believe it. Because the Lord says, uh, the, actually the scripture says, Peter, uh, on the day of Pentecost, uh, not Psalm, Acts 2, after the Lord released his spirit in that great way where they all prayed, uh, they all spoke in tongues for the first time, and people thought they were crazy. Peter preached an amazing sermon. Lots of people got saved. They were caught to the heart. And then he said these words. He says, this gift of the Holy Spirit that you've just seen, which is the praying in tongues, the speaking in tongues, rather, and all that, this gift of the Holy Spirit is for you. That's the people there. It says, it's for all those who are far off, the people not, not there. And then he says, for as many as the Lord will call. So that is future. That is centuries ahead. That includes us. So as many as the Lord will call is us. That means we are qualified to walk in that reality of speaking in tongues, praying in tongues. And so I believe it's a gift for every believer. And I don't have time to go into all of that theology right now. I did a teaching right here on YouTube. You can search for it. Praying in tongues, myths, mysteries, and misunderstandings. We break that down a bit more. However, tonight, I'm going to share a few things from Psalm 42. Psalm 42, verse 7. Many of you have heard this verse before. It says, deep calls Unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. Actually, before I read that passage, uh, because once I start, we're going to go into prayer. We're aiming to uh, finish. Uh, I'm aiming to finish speaking just before midnight so we can start praying. I need to in introduce the team because we have some people in the studio that have not been here for a long time, and some of them is their first time. So I'm going to introduce them quickly. Obviously, on, Bola on drums, we've got Bolaji again. Welcome, Bolaji. On guitar, we do have Paul Eaton. Thank you, Paul, for joining us. He recently got married, and he's, if you've been on our live streams, you've seen him some months ago, and uh, he decided to visit us again. So thank you, Paul. God bless you. And on bass, we've got Israel. It's Israel's first time playing with Prayer Storm ever. So Israel, we hope it's not going to be your last time. 
<laughs> now, I'm sure he's going to come back. In fact, he's rotated to be on for a few times all, all through this 21 night. So great to have you, Israel. We've got Caleb on keys. And in the corridor, we've got another amazing person. It's the second time on. It's Fat Moon. Give it up for Fat Moon. It's the second time joining us tonight. And we've, you can see some of the intercessors at the back over there, Sister Debbie and uh, uh, Claire. And uh, we've got Sonja. And I think, I don't know if we have someone else. But that's about it, probably. Yeah, that's about it. Have I missed it? Okay, anyway, God bless you. I'm taking it all the time. Okay, cool. So, back to Psalms 42. Psalm 42 says, Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. You see, in this, in this time we're living in, even as we, by the way, we're fasting for 21 days. And so, if you're just hearing that for the first time and you would like to join us, start right now. Ask the Lord how he would like you to fast in this season. As we pray, we're fasting. Now, when we begin to pursue God, it begins to stir up the things that he's placed deep within us. And when you connect to that deep cry of the Holy Spirit within you, that cry of the Holy Spirit within you causes you to, causes you to have access to the deep things of God. So the deep things in God call to the deep things he's placed in us. And when you travel deep in God, it's just like going deep in the ocean. Certain things can't exist at certain depths. And so sometimes people would spend a lot of energy praying into circumstances that they wouldn't really need to pray about if they travel to a deep place in God. Because some of those circumstances would take care of themselves because some things cannot exist at that level of depth in God. Am I making any sense to anyone tonight? Listen, just as the deep calls unto deep, guess what? Shallow calls unto shallow. Many believers live their lives in the shallow place. And so they're constantly being entertained by the things of the world, the systems of the world, the ideas of the world. So when it's time to go deep in God, their hunger, their appetite is not stirred because they've lived in that shallow place. And in this season, as we're journeying in God, as we're praying in the spirit, I believe the Lord is going to be unlocking deep things within us. Some of you is going to start to awaken desires that you've never actually connected with. It's going to be holy desires. Listen, God is concerned about your emotions because he said the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That affects your emotions. You can't tell me you have peace and joy and your emotions are not engaged with that reality. It's impossible. So it's a spiritual reality that affects how you actually feel in your emotions. So the kingdom of God affects how you feel. And for many people, they have unrighteous emotions. When your emotions are empowered by righteousness, it's easier to make righteous decisions. It's easier to be stirred in the right path to seek God, to pray, to fast. When your emotions are aligned, John the Baptist was a man who was on fire because his heart was burning with desire. Desire affects emotions. Some people think, okay, I'm just going to worship God with my intellect. And they come to church and they worship and they, 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 they worship God like he, that God, like God himself does not have emotions. Now, I'm not preaching emotionalism. I'm talking about the fact that your personality and your spirituality should have a there should be a collision between your personality and your spirituality. Just some people go so crazy at the football field for football, but when it's time for prayer or it's time for worship, they're like frozen chickens. It's like there's nothing in them to release to God. But they, they were just talking so excited and animated about the Premier League a few moments ago. Well, God wants everything is placed in your personality to engage with your spirituality. So if you're intense and you're loud like me, he wants that to find expression in your devotion to him. If you're a chilled, quiet person, well, let that be expressed as well. We don't all have to be the same. However, we have to be real in our pursuit of God. And God in this season is wanting us to shift, transition from the shallow place. Some of you, you need to stop watching some, uh, some films, some uh, series you've been addicted to, and it's all shallow. It's all shallow. It's all shallow. You finish watching it, and all your flesh is just stirred. You're stirred in all the ideas of the flesh. And the more you entertain the flesh, the more bored you become spiritually. So you need to now start to shut down the flesh, shut down all these things that feed in your flesh, and say, Lord, I want the deep to be stirred in me in this season. I want to go to a deep place in God. So that's our short exhortation as we go into prayer tonight. We are after deep encounters with the Lord. We are after the Lord changing us in significant ways. This is not just a show. This is not just, you know, some crazy live stream on YouTube for the sake of just having people watch. No, no, we, we are after God. Listen, this is authentic. We're not doing this because you're watching. We do this when you're not watching. We're here to press into God. And I want you to give everything. Get rid of distractions tonight. Let us, ha let us ask the Holy Spirit for a fresh, 
depth in him that there will be a stirring of something deep when that hunger is awoken when the hunger is stirred in your heart it doesn't matter where you are when you're hungry you're going to do some things because of that hunger and so tonight we're saying father we don't want to be in a shallow place tonight we don't want to be in a dull place we're not we don't want to be just fulfilled by all the things the world has to offer we want our fulfillment to be in your presence like david said in psalm 27 he says one thing i have desired of the lord and that will i seek that i might dwell in the presence of the lord all the days of my life to behold his beauty and to seek him in his temple lord we want to behold your beauty we want to seek you in your temple and we are desiring this one thing to be with you we're desiring this one thing to encounter you deeper we're desiring this one thing father that you would would, would transform us from the inside out and that we will reflect your image to a world that's dying a world that's lost father we want to travel tonight oh lord father even right now ask that lord the coordinates in the spirit will begin to be set for this journey we're about to take just like Abraham journeyed Abraham journeyed and he was led by you tonight we said would you take us by the hand and take us on a spiritual pilgrimage tonight pray that right now say Lord take me on a spiritual pilgrimage by the hand take me where I've never been before take me to realms of encounter I've never been in before let tonight be one of those nights Father where your presence impacts me like never before Jesus encounter me afresh Lord Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Rabba baba yava, si vele de baba kapa eva. Zebe bala da ban re vele de baba 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 yala da ba. Rebe baba yala da va kapa yele de va kapa. Rebe ban de bala sa vele de va kapa yele de ba. Vanda kota le zevia kapa eva. Take us by the hand, Lord. Take us to realms of encounter with you. Take us to realms of transformation. Take us to places we've never been in the spirit, Lord. We want to be changed. Let tonight be a night of depth. Deep calling unto deep. Deep calling unto deep.
a prototype for those who will seek your face. We say, Lord, we will seek you. We will journey just like Abraham through spiritual pathways in search of our inheritance in the spirit. Every inheritance you have for us in the spirit. We search for that, Father, even in prayer as we journey into the deep things of the Lord, Lord. We journey into deep things in the spirit, Lord. You will take us by the hand and take us where we've never been before. We, we journey in the spirit. We journey in the spirit just like Abraham journeyed, Lord. Take us to a place we've never been in you, Lord. We will not settle for where we've been. We will not settle for the shallow. We will not settle for mundane Christianity. We will not settle for the same old Lord. We will not settle for where we've been, Lord. We journey where we've never been before. Oh, we've 